Krishna Swarnamurthy, working as assistant professor in Kongu Engineering College in Electronics and Communication Engineering branch. Today we are going to see about embedded system design life cycle. Before going to see about embedded system design life cycle, uh, we will discuss about what is meant by embedded system. Embedded system is combination of hardware plus software. It's a combination of hardware and software which is used to perform a specific task at specific time. Okay, the first of all. Uh, how it will be differs from embedded system with microprocessor means microprocessor is a general purpose processor uh, general purpose processor general purpose processor which is used uh, used wide range of applications but embedded systems is specially designed for a specific task it's a it's a designed for a dedicated applications for example atm machines washing machines microwave oven my mobile phones these are the real time examples for embedded systems okay now we are going to see about that embedded system design life cycles. There are seven spaces available. The phase one is product specification. Phase two is hardware software partitioning. Phase three is iteration and implementation. Phase four is detailed hardware software design. And then phase five is hardware software integration. Phase six is uh, acceptance and testing. And then phase seven is maintenance and upgrade. Okay. In the first phase is product specific product specification. This is the first. This is the initial phase of embedded system design life cycle. In this design life cycle, uh, consists of uh, initially they will be formed a research team. The research team uh, consists of R and D engineers, marketing engineers, and then sales engineers. These teams uh, will go and visit the several customers and then several outlets. Uh, they will collect the feedbacks about the existing products and what are all the customers' requirements. They will be collect from uh, collect through a survey. Uh, before uh, going to visit that customer, they will prepare a set of questions. They will be asked with uh, uh, valuable customers and then uh, already used, uh, already the product using, uh, utilizing customers. Uh, from that uh, feedback, uh, they will be try to include, uh, they, they will be identify what are the features we can able to include in these features. Uh, this is the phase one, uh, it's a product specification. And then phase two, once the problem was defined, uh, in phase two uh, is hardware software partitioning. Which portion of the problem is identified, which portion of the problem is solved in hardware and then which portion of the so problem is solved by in software. That can be de uh, defined in hardware software partitioning. For example, uh, if you consider uh, uh, 8086 microprocessor, 8086 microprocessor, in this 8086 microprocessor having inbuilt arithmetic uh, ALU unit is available that is used to perform all kind of arithmetic operations like we can able to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, divisions like that. But the what is the problem here means uh, we can't able to perform a floating point operations. So uh, the floating point uh, operations we can't able to execute in the hardware itself. Uh, but we can we can able to execute in a software level or software level or program level we can able to execute that floating point operations. In case if you want to execute that floating point operations also in hardware level, we have to move 8087 processor. This 8087 processor is having floating point units available. So we can able to perform a uh, floating point operations also uh, in hardware level model. So uh, in case uh, if you want to uh, increase your uh, speed, execution speed, execution speed means you have to prefer 8087. So the time is not constraints. Uh, Time is not constraint, speed is not constraint means you can prefer the 8087, 8087, uh, sorry, 8086 processor. Uh, one thing we have to remember, the hardware execution is always faster than the software execution. Hardware execution is always faster than the software execution. So, uh, your execution time is, uh, the uh, your, your time constraints is required means the, our application, we need to ex execute within a specific period, you can prefer the 8087. The time is not in not constraints. Uh, cost is constraint means you have prefer the 8086 processor. This is the uh, example of uh, hardware software partitioning. The next phase is phase number three is uh, iteration and then implementation. In this iteration and implementation, uh, iteration itself we can able to know. Uh, we need to continuously or uh, repeatedly update the code or modify the code up to we will get the de desired output. It's maybe an assimilation level. Uh, so level. For example, in uh, uh, hardware engineers, they can use uh, hardware simulators to execute uh, execute that um, uh, develop that models or architectures. Software sites, uh, the software engineers, they can use uh, 
benchmarks or self combined benchmarks they can be used uh, they can use to test uh, test and then in phase 4 uh, detailed hardware and software design uh, in this phase uh, in this phase uh, uh, hardware and then software both are will be parallelly will be developed together uh, in hardware side they can choose uh, processor processor memory processor memory uh, sensors actuators input outputs uh, these are all can be uh, chosen in the hardware side uh, furthermore uh, the hardware side initially we have to assign that uh, memories and then programmable registers once the programmable registers and then memory mapping addresses are allocated then only the software teams can able to develop that software side so once that uh, hard hardware side that uh, programmable registers and then uh, mem uh, memories are documentized the software team starts to work uh, they, they can develop that system level programming or they can develop the device drivers develop the device drivers they can develop the device drivers or else the user interfaces like uh, or OS and then R plus they can develop in the software sites. Okay, the next uh, phase is uh, hardware software integration. This is the crucial phase in uh, embedded system design life cycle the hardware software integration. Uh, in this uh, hardware software integration, uh, it's not properly integrated. Uh, we can't able to integrate software with uh, hardware. So this is a crucial phase. In this phase, uh, we can uh, give or we can say some examples. Uh, little Indian and then Big Indian problems. Uh, little Indian and then Big Indian problems. Uh, in phase five, we are going to see about hardware software integration. Uh, this is a crucial phase in embedded system design life cycle. If properly we are not integrated with hardware and software, the hardware software is properly not in tracks. So uh, that the one of the main problem in hardware and software integration is Little Indian and then Big Indian problems. Uh, basically, that. Uh, Hardware designers always follow that um, big Indians. The software engineers always follow that little Indians. Uh, for example, that uh, uh, for example, we can uh, assume that uh, hardware will be transmits uh, like 0019 means that software will be received like a 1900. So to avoid this issue, uh, we have to end, uh, to avoid the issues by using bit reversal, bit reversals or Indian our, our protocols, we have to use it. Okay, the next phase is uh, phase number six. Uh, this is acceptance and testing. Uh, testing is nothing but, okay, uh, we have to verify our design product is working properly or not. Uh, it's used to identify the bugs and then user issues can be uh, tested in the uh, phase six. Uh, phase. Uh, in phase six acceptance and testing, in this acceptance and testing is mainly used to identify the uh, bugs or any user issues is available to is available is if available means we have to test and then we have to modify it in phase six. Uh, in phase six, um, mainly used to verify our products are using uh, resources are efficiently or unwantedly wasting for unnecessary tasks. That is that's also we have to verify. Actually, in uh, phase six, uh, in the testing, having uh, four different types of testing is available. One is the functional testing, another one is the usability testing, and then third one is performance testing, and then compatibility testing. Actually, functionality testing. For example, uh, if you consider uh, mobile phone is our product means, uh, we have to check about that calls, messages, cameras, and then uh, uh, what are the functional activities is available in mobile phones that we have to check in functionality testing. Okay. The next one is the usability testing. In usability testing means uh, we have to check uh, user interfaces like uh, OS, operating software, and then uh, any applications, uh, uh, software applications in any difficulties is there, we have to check it. And then performance testing. In this performance testing, we have to check about uh, the speed of this, our, process, our mobile phone, that means speed of our mobile phone processor. And then we have to check about that battery life and then power consumption, we have to check about that in performance testing. And then compatibility testing in compatible testing means we got to check whether it's 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 suitable for uh, support in all kind of accessories for example headphones and then chargers like that we have to check uh, these are the uh, various types of testings in uh, phase six okay and then phase seven is the maintenance and upgrade this is the last stage of embedded system life cycle after the rigorous testing also we have possible to identify the bugs 
in case uh, in uh, in case in the after releasing the product we have find any bugs uh, like software level uh, it will be constraints we have to update a new version of software and then uh, software patches and then print patches uh, to resolve this issues by using uh, providing new software uh, this is the uh, outline of the embedded system design life cycle thank you